it's a very very popular seva being done to especially in vishnu temples this is being done in thailand which is very curious and another most important thing is today we have teacher day when the birthday of the dr s radhakrishnan was ex president of india you know the teachers day in uh, thailand it is the first thursday of every first term when the school reopens and this is invariably held on first thursday which is brihaspati vara then we find in japan the gods saraswati ganesha and saraswati is worshiped we also have varuna being worshiped in japan yama is also worshiped in addition to that now as i spoke to you in australia and new zealand you find the references to kashyapa and also to shiva shiva is said the aborigines perform the uh trinetra dance of shiva this is a very very concise attempt towards the what is now lying towards the east of what we have now let us come to what we right now are towards the west of us a bird's eye view number one let us take <coughs> the city lahur lahur was founded by sri rama san lava today even now of course in a dilapidated condition a temple of lava then probably you would have read it uh, today's morning or yesterday's paper in the kan that a temple of about 1000 years and 300 years old vishnu temple is supposed to be vishnu temple a temple has been found 1300 years old the morning i thought was saying i told them that they are predicted around 3 years back in the sense that there is a curious piece of information about history in indian history is that as i said earlier i'm sorry i'm not digressing when we are talking about the presence of hinduism throughout the world we have to relate it to the time frame in indian chronology of kings kings list as we call it then the events that are happening or happened previously in the other parts of the world so that it could justify our claim that how our uh, sanatan dharma was present there the prayer to lord uh, rama there was a king by name all of you might have heard sibi that sibi is mentioned in sibi is mentioned in our uh, purana and also in tamil sangam tamil sangam literature the sibi was a, a very very virtuous man and he actually cut down a part of his flesh from his thigh to help a dog and he was a just man also and this man preceded la uh, sri ram i'm sorry i don't normally use the term lord rama because it is an un indian concept god is not somebody to whom we are slaves he is our father he is our friend and he is our guru so we revere him we love him we respect him never we are afraid of him so we never call him we are not slaves we don't rest. so please excuse me we do not use the christian term as lord rama so sri rama when uh, sri rama was preceded by shivi by about couple a lot of generations about 15 16 generations earlier and that shivi had built a temple near sri rangam the vaishnavas uh, sacred place in tamil nadu he has temple 77 kilometers from tamil nadu i mean sri rangam it is called the tiruvallurai for for lord pondarikacha and that temple is older than sri rangam because it was built by the ancestor of rama himself then there are sri vishnu's question that also let us leave it i am talking only by fact then this sibi there is a reference in our text that the sibi in tamil literature and also the foreign text that sibi ruled from what is now called the swat valley and the and the north west frontier province of pakistan now this is reinforced by the fact that even today we can find 
Tamil in its rudimentary form being spoken along Brahi and other languages, Pushtu and those areas in border of Afghanistan and Northwest uh, uh, Frontier Province and Swat Valley of Pakistan, even Tamil in the rudimentary form being spoken. Now, the CB was present in the uh, pa Pakistan area. And uh, then again, you go about Kandahar. We need not say about that. All of us know about Kandari. Kandari was the wife of uh, Virdarashtra. And many, of, many people may not know. When they are talking about Indian history, about Alexander, who is reported to have defeated <coughs> Purushottam, now we, they call them as poor Purushottam, with the help of one Ambi. And it is often touted that Ambi was a man who betrayed uh, you know, Purushottam and Alexander too is him. But many people forget that what happened to Gandhara kingdom? This Gandhara kingdom, the Ambi whom we are speaking about is the descendant of Shakuni. The total history is different. Alexander did not win the war. Ambi was not a traitor. Purushottama was not defeated. Alexander did not win. He came back. He went back empty handed. This is not from India, it's from a Russian research which I have posted. And in fact, Alexander feared the Bengali smoke and the elephants of India, Purushottam, and then he ran back. And, and we rely so much of Megasthenes text on India. I have also quoted him. Unfortunately, I mean, he writes in so much detail about Shatakutra Maurya, we feel he has to be his brother's brother. Unfortunately, the actor, uh, Shatakutra Maurya, I mean, he has never met Shatakutra Maurya in his life at all. There's no evidence. So, leaving aside that, if Alexander's invasion was the first contact between the People who are beyond Bharatavarsha is true. Then how come people who preceded, who were born before Alexander, were quoting Indian texts? How Indian thoughts are found in Greek philosophy? How Indian people are being referred to, referred to by Herodotus, Arian, Megasthenes, and the whole lot of them? Everybody is referring. Now. It's not, it's not as though only after uh, uh, Alexander came to India, he took back whatever he learned from India. It's totally incorrect. Because the thought of Indianness, indeed, was present there. So when we talk about uh, Greece, directly it goes to, when Megasthenes traveled, he goes very extensively. He goes to the extent of saying, Dionysus, the first god in Greek religion, is none other than Siva worship. He writes, no, please go to the source, Indica. He writes, Rhinoceros was an Indian god. We then we just go there, the uh, disciples of Dionysus from Greece went to India and then worship. If Rhinoceros was in uh, Greek, why did they come to India to worship him? Please go to. Then there is also a reference in our text that Brigu Vamsa as a tribe, they settled in Greece. That's the reference to that also. Then again, when you look at carefully the philosophy of Greeks and the mythology, it comes parallel. And in addition, again I quote Megasthenes, Strabo, and Arian. They are all uh, uh, old Greek scholars. They talk about <coughs> Krishna. And Megasthenes, Krishna, and he talks about, they talk about Krishna. They say the pillars of Hercules was there is a contradictory opinion between three great historical writers. One says it is dedicated to Sri Krishna. Another says it is dedicated to Balarama. Another man says it is Shiva. But my view is that it is possibly uh, dedicated, based on the evidence, to Krishna, either Krishna or Balarama. Then, one curious fact mentioned by uh, Megasthenes is that Lord Krishna, uh, sorry, Sri Krishna had a daughter named Pandya and he got her married to a Pandya king and he had a daughter 
and she and his daughter uh, he had a daughter through his uh, wife a pandian princess and gave away about not about 100 families of yadavas to supply milk ghee and curd to his uh, daughter's descendants so this is what uh, your uh, greece is talking about hercules pillar then we are talking about now let us take about the what about the building of human civilization what we are talking about one what they call is sumeria normally when we read our old textbook when we recall our day the oldest civilization in the world is sumerian civilization then comes assyria they talk about a lot of things but who preceded sumeria that's why i was be nearly 10 podcasts i published i still not scratch the surface of it. number one fact sumeria the, if you take sumeria as the oldest civilization in the world sumeria is normally assigned to the geographical area between the euphrates and tigris, tigris basin and in general it included lebanon syria iraq turkey and egypt in general but as the empires rose and fell then these this kingdom this mesopotamian region included italy as well and the reason why i am including italy is that let me with i found in italy that is the reason always i bother about italy what should i worry about italy talk and it's an advanced situation I'm giving you i'll talk about italy in detail now in mesopotamia the earliest civilization is sumerian is mentioned the sumerians had a list of kings this is called kings list it is in general historical term archaeological term it is called as kings list of sumeria this kings list of sumeria contains the three names one is dasaratha next is rama another is bharata dasaratha is spelled as sushrata and rama as rama bharata as bharata and the mention they mention that rama ruled over 60 years in that region bharata not much is known and some descendants are shown and as far as dasaratha this sushrata is supposed to be very good in charioteering that is who can drive chariots and from our record we know dasaratha is a man who is very adept in driving the chariot that is the second proof and then the second proof that the dasaratha he refers to is the dasaratha father of ramachandra of ramayana and <clears throat> this dasaratha had we just see at the same at the time when sumerian civilian was there sumerian was located towards the north coast of mesopotamia and there was a, another civilization akkadian there is a dispute among the, um, historians as to which civilization preceded the civilization which i'm talking about was akkadian akkadian civilization and the sumerian civilization this akkadian civilization and the sumerian civilization uh, they were coexistent now during this period now you know this south is akkadian north is uh, sumerian the sumerian toward the north west of that area this, now you know you can pass my hand this is so now you take this uh, valley the bottom portion is akkadian the up, uh, northern portion is uh, sumerian on the north western side we have what we call it hittis hard to say i'll come back and refer to them that also has an indian connection now when there was a war between normally there used to be a war between sumerian and hill uh, hitti now when there is a war between sumerians and hitti they signed a pre, uh, peace treaty you know the names have been a war when we sign normally when we write a document today we have witnesses in bond paper in those days they also wrote a war once peace treaty was signed you know the witnesses who were given the witnesses names varuna Mitra and Ashins. I leave it to you what it is about. You know who they are. Then we find there is in uh, there was a find in a place called Uru. 
In Canada, Uru same. Tamil also Uru. You are you. A small town. <coughs> there, initially, it was thought to, it was thought, it belonged to the Roman Empire. After 1834, it was found. In 1860, it was found that it belonged to much earlier civilization, Hattusa. And not even that, much earlier to that, that is called Ubai period, Ubai, that is New Stone Age, very, very early, which you can date it quite, quite far. And that, that the place which they had dug out Uru was dated to be the first empire in the Middle East, the first human serpent, not empire. People had started from the New Stone Age. This, a temple was dedicated in that place. That temple, you know the name, the name of the temple? Rama Chapel. Now, you guess, your guess is that this is my Rama Temple, earliest human settlement in the Middle East. The reason, the reason could be only one simple reason. Rama Temple should have extended with that. I have written in detail, Rama Temple has covered the whole world and my replies to critics part two. So, that is one. And second interest point, point what happens is, this Uru, Bible refers to that. Bible refers to this town Uru and says that that Uru was the place where Abraham's home was located. Some, why some many scholars disagreed with that and said that the original home of Abraham was not located in Uru and was located much towards the much towards the west that is Turkey, Syria, Barra, near the town Haran. I hope you understand what the term Haran means. Yes, you are hundred percent right. It denotes Sri Shiva in Indian pantheon. Haran is pronounced as H A R A N and also H A R A N. Now, to the surprise of that, now in this area they found a lot of artifacts which refers to the presence of Hindu concept and the crescent moon is also found there. And all of us, all of us know Somnath is the name of Saint Shiva. I, I, the, in the, I'll speak in detail about Shiva when I talk about Shiva. How come Shiva has landed in you find so that you find that in Arabian, we have a king. That king is called the second king, Naram Singh. In this Naram Singh, the artifacts found is he is described a man who is applying. In the Indian text, you will find. A king is always connected to a king in terms of his valor. And we, we also do find a lot of connections to Harappa and also Tamil city. The Akkadians have a, uh, they were training in sea same oil from, they imported from uh, <coughs> South India, what we call South India, Yeldu. In Tamil, in Karnada also I think it is Yeldu, still. See same. So that is found. And you know the town, the name they have found in that Akkadian town where Naram Singh used? Nagar. How many Nagars do we find in Bangalore or throughout India, at least in South? Nagar is a Sanskrit word. Nagar is also used in Tamil. I think Nagar is also used in Telugu and Tamil uh, So that's the connection we have to the Middle East. So I'm still delving deep into that. I'll address it again. Then we find to the most controversial area is about the Arabian Peninsula. When you are talking about Arabia, people make you to believe that prior to the advent of Islam, the people who were living there simply you will find there are two places, three areas where history is just brushed aside. One is Arabia, 
and uh, something when uh, people came home when go uh, came he drove away all the tribes and they were only nomads they were cultural things when you talk about you know similarly about uh, <clears throat> what is now called as uh, south america now uh, south america uh, north america there were some red indians as in their own culture will be later similarly you will find some america uh, some below the nazis unfortunately and africa when you people talk about africa being the cradle of humanity and from where human beings migrated of course i disagree with it the migration took place in from india and it has not come from africa to india because the austrian i mean african dna has been sourced back to india to be very specific located somewhere near modern i said paper published also i mean i report also we we'll leave that now such a great first human being was born you record it as saying that the first civilization has from first man has sprung from africa till say these fellows knew nothing before christian became is that not uh, is it sound to believe that no similarly in saudi arabia i have seen through my travels also one of the most hospitable people very highly cultured people i i refuse to believe that there were mere nomads before islam came and everybody has become muslim i'm sorry it's not so this tree speaks otherwise the first kingdom empire in that place for which we can have direct evidence is from vikramaditya right is that rama had one but still more evidence is needed but vikramaditya introduced the sanatana dharma there and even today we have vikramaditya inscription in kaaba number 2 Vikramaditya had idols in stock. Point number three: Prophet Muhammad's family was interested with the daily administration and performance of puja in the temple, and these people were imported from India. Point number four: The Shiva Linga what you find and um, what you find in Kaaba is the shivalinga i have posted original video taken surreptitiously what exactly it is and also what was originally kept in the museum uh, in uh, <clears throat> museum and how it was taken all those details i provided that is covered then one more interesting factor now for art our statements i am making i am just not making half the cuts just to make people i'm sorry please go and read my articles and i have provided links they are not theories my theories i i have done separately now these are the facts i am presenting based on the theory i have provided something that is yet to be proved depending on other further research and further research. now all of us know mount gedini invaded india not less than 18 times have we ever wondered if one man as invaded and conquered a country why should he invade 18 times okay forget it once he has invaded is not completed second he has invaded three times four times five why 18 times the reason is when mahmud moved from medina all have references when mahmud moved from medina to mecca he demolished over 360 idols which included devi which included navagrahas which included vishnu they did not take shiva which is lying down there now these people the early tribes what we call them were worshiping an idol when the prophet attacked medina and mecca and destroyed the idols he found this idol and he thought, i mean he was looking for the letter this was called in their language manna m a n n a t m a n n a t it is variously described as goddess of fate and in at times it is also called as goddess of virility and goddess of fertility and as i said let me tell you 
the house of Shahrukh Khan is named as Manna. Okay, this Manna was not found there. So when Gajini came to power, he came. He heard that somebody has smuggled it out and kept to that in Somna. He raided it 18 times to find it. And he was not able to find it. Even today, nobody knows who where that has gone. And another information regarding Mecca. In Mecca, the worship time stops starts at Pradosha time. And what the Muslims do as Pradakshana, they do it Aprashna, we call it. It is nothing but a 50% attempt at Soma Sukta Pradakshana, which is being done to Shiva. What they are doing is exactly doing the opposite of what we are doing. When we go from left to right, they come right to them. That is, they do it. But that concept has evolved from Soma Sukta Pradakshana, which is offered to Shiva during Pradakshana time. Samasukta Pradoshana is not directly doing everything in Pradakshana. You go half the distance, come back to Nandi, again you go Pradakshana, then again you come back. It's a detailed position. I've written in detail about that. That is another, I mean, another evidence. The next evidence is that people who follow Islam are not allowed to wear a stitched cloth. Now, here we are also not allowed to wear sticks of cloth. You see, whenever we wear, we don't wear. So sorry, they are opposed to, they are, sorry, we are not supposed to wear the sticks of cloth as Hindu, but they wear sticks of cloth when they are doing the daily duties. But when they go also, they do the same thing. But when they do the yoga vesti, this totally is an Indian tradition. As Brahmins who practice this Vera Vyasa, they will know how to wear the yoga vishti. Next time when you look at people who offer their obeisance in Kaaba, you will find how they wear their top portion. Then to top it all, there is a Sivastuti by Prophet's uncle. The translation I have given. Then there is a Zamzam water. See, when there is Shiva, Gaga cannot be left behind. You also find it in the Kamali. <clears throat> then, let's go further down. Now, as I said earlier, in Italy, you know, further west when you go, you find in Italy, I mean, remains of the Lakshmi in Pompeii. In Pompeii, it has, uh, Lakshmi's idol was found. And curiously, Rome was founded Please don't think this is perfect. I give an evidence. Rome was founded on Sri Rama Naomi Day. I discuss exclusively on this. The presence of Rama throughout the world, or the, the name Rama throughout the world. Why Rama is given important? Why he is everywhere? Then we find in England, in England, Till the 13th century, people were buried with hands folded after the death. People were buried after the death with their hands folded. The Namaste question. I provided evidence also. And before the advent of Gregorian calendar, Gregorian calendar, they were following our Vikramaditya calendar. I will written a detailed article on this. Whatever terms please refer, you just make a note of it. And just that term, England, Ramanan 50, UK. Then you get the series of letters because it has taken so, and I am trying to put them in a sort of book form. It will take some time, it's a lot of doing. Then we shift our attention towards the north west of uh, India. Now what do we have? Now let us talk about Russia. Now one curious fact is that if we read our text very carefully, we will find that Vasita appears suddenly from somewhere and he becomes 
missing after Ramayana's war. And suddenly, during that period, when Nala, Damayanti, and everything comes, you know, suddenly, Viswamitra story will come, and Viswamitra and then they will try, and Viswamitra tribe, and Vasishtra tribe will be there, then Kamarainu will be there, Sagara, all these things. When suddenly, this gentleman will go missing. Where, where, where is Vasishtra gone? Okay. So, this, there is a beautiful book. Written, I'll leave it later. The Vedas were compiled in the Arctic. Okay. Bargangar, Telkastra, beautiful book. The, now, as I said earlier, we'll have to remember the, the geographical terms. We are referring to this. In fact, that now archaeologists have found the city built by Pradyumna in honor of his father, Sri Krishna, in what is now called Russia. It is called, it's called Por Barzan. Barzan, B A R is an H I N. Barzan also they say. That's a city built that is reported to have been built when he was attacked by Jarasantha continuously. And it was uh, now Putin has also visited that and he has certified that he was quite amazing. Then we find the original name of uh, Russia was Trivarsha and it was a republic. And we find that Yagi Vaikar lived there and Indra Vaikana Satirtha is Lake Vaikar and in Uras you find Narodnaya, it is a mountain name, it is from the name Narada, it is called Narada Mountain. I think I have been given the time up to 7.30, I am reaching at 7.20, now I, my watch tells me it's 7.20. I think to conclude this session in about 5 or 6 minutes, to complete my, I am invisible, I think my here video has gone. Hello? Now? Oh, we are, we are seeing the video, sir. It yeah. is fine. Okay. We are able to hear. Yes, yes. Yeah, video is also fine. Yeah. Audio is also fine. Yeah. To sum it up, this two was the subject to be compressed. I have given a basic idea as to how we are with Pristan. And the reason for our Sanatana having been present is that number one, the all inclusiveness of Sanatana Dharma. Hinduism is the only religion which can say, a God in the form of man can say, I have told you whatever is good for you. You decide what to do. Krishna, he teaches Arjuna 18 chapters, Bhagavad Gita. I normally regard two people as the greatest teacher. One gentleman is called Shiva, another gentleman is Vishnu. Shiva is a gentleman, as Krishna says, at the end of everything is silence. The highest form of realization and knowledge is silent. Of languages, I am Mona. That is Lord Krishna Siva. Siva imparts knowledge through his silence, whereas Krishna by argument he imparts. Such a great man, he keeps on teaching Arjuna and in the 18th chapter, I think around 63rd, at the Karma Dhamma and Karma before that, after that, Mona Tusa, he says, Arjuna, I have taught you everything, whatever that is to be learned, secret. Now, where it be other little what you guys sir? If you don't follow, one fellow would have said you would become a sinner. Another chap would have said, I will kill you. The gentleman says, I have given you all the secrets, but now you decide what is good for you. That is the great of Hinduism. Hinduism is a religion, it is a thought process which accommodates atheism. It accommodates Javali. Jabali, as much it accommodates Sri Rama. And it is all inclusive. If you disagree with me, it's fine. And it is not institutionalized. If you want to go to temple, you go. If you don't want to go to temple, you don't go. If you want to practice this, it says, in nowhere the Vedas say, if you don't trust the Vedas, you will drop. No. This is the truth. It is just like a doctor. If you are sick, as a doctor, I am giving you prescribing you some medicines people have found in laboratory. I am giving you, try it out. If you start questioning, who are you, which university have you studied, you show me the report, doctor's list for that, 
If you want to follow, you follow. Right? Such is the greatness of this religion. People of the all regions have embraced it because it suited the religion was not was made for man. Man was not made for religion. Hinduism is a lifestyle which can be adopted by an individual for his welfare. It doesn't trust them. That is the reason for its success. That is the reason for the spread out throughout the world. And even today, we find its remains. And in my, in my own way, what I would request people is that please, please, I request you to read the original source whether you have seen the mother than Canada, or Tamil, or Telugu, or Konkani, or Tulu. Your text, don't read the translation and come back. Because you know your mother better, you know your father better. With that, I thank all of you for having given me the opportunity to speak to you. I don't know whether I have done justice to <clears throat> the people who are organized or the subject I have undertaken to speak. If there are any press points, may go to God of Abhirami. If there are any mistakes, let it go to my insufficient intelligence. Thank you. Any questions, welcome. Sure, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, lecture, sir. So now the session is open for question. Anybody who is having a question, please uh, use the raise option of Zoom. <coughs> No. Sir, okay. Yeah. No, I have one question myself, sir. So you refer to that Ila, Ila Vamsham yeah. uh, migrating to Middle East some. Yeah. Repeat that part because I missed that link. And how do we say that it is associated with Middle East? Yeah. See, Ila dynasty. The dynasty is at that point as I was saying earlier, the hotel load, uh, I mean, uh, landmark is different. Now, the theory is that, you know, not only that since the land was different, a group of the, the descendants, spread the Chandramamsa, was split into various groups. From the Pururas side, there are the sons of Pururas, only one son was in a position to help his father out. The rest of the, the, ones, the other sons were sent away by Pururas as Malaysia, in the sense that you will become barbarian, you get away from here. And they had gone. And after that, and they established the, I mean, they were the basic tribes who were moved there. In addition to this Ayla dynasty, Chandravamsa. And there is another, this problem, this Chandravamsa and Suryavamsa, they were intermarried. So with the result that in certain cases, when the male, you know, when the male child from the Chandravamsa comes and they marry uh, your Suryavamsa, in our, you know, hierarchy, we assign it to Chandravamsa. Definitely, it can be also Chandravamsa, depending on the <coughs> parent is concerned. So, when they went into Middle East, the, the, we just really can't say they went, because it's a total area, there were, there were not any people. The excepting in the case of uh, uh, Sri Ramachandra, we do not have any evidence of any other kings having lived there. We are going to say, that to say, for instance, that to see Ramachandra fought with somebody, there should have been somebody to fight, isn't it? When Rada, Rama, I mean, Sri Rama sent the Ashwamedha, he had nobody excepting Lava and Kusar. Right? So, uh, these Ayla dynasties were the basic remnants, I mean, the remnants of the basic Vedic tribes from uh, Luna, I know, uh, Vedic tribes from uh, Chandramansa. And from there came, and there is another also a parallel track is running. This Turuasu. Turuasu is one of the descendants of Puru, Puru, Puru. And from there also, the dynasty went back. So, from at different levels. One is right from four or five levels from Chandramamsa itself, people moved across when there was a flood movement in southern India. In the sun, there is again, there is one more. Uh, you know, little to be solved. When we take about all these things, the basic two questions remain. One is, how do you account for <clears throat> the remains of 
remains of the earliest Tamil civilization, or what you call as the Dravidian Tamil civilization, may be a Vishnama, a civilization which is different from Sanatana Dharma in certain practices, but again, in general, which agrees with the uh, Sanatana practices, what was it, where was it like? Because more, most of including Graham, Hancock, and researchers, prove that it was lying somewhere towards the towards what is now, I mean, towards the north east of what is now the Australia. Now, what was that civilization? Now, you post, uh, post it with the fact that one of the oldest mountain ranges in the world is our, our own, that is uh, uh, Western and Eastern Ghats. When compared to it, the Himalaya itself is quite nascent. It's about 40 or 50 like years, but it's run into billions of years. Now, you ask me one question as far as other home science is concerned. This is the answer I gave, but some interesting questions I thought people who are interested may look into it. Now, when you look at it, you look at it like this. When you're talking about Shiva, you will not find much of a reference in, about Shiva in uh, Veda, as much in South India. The amount of literature is found in Tamil literature is not found in North India at all about Shiva, I think. And the number of temples in South is more for Shiva than for Shiva. Yeah, as a matter of fact. But how is it? And in the northern, northern stories, you will find that Shiva comes and then she marries Parvadara Dukumari, and then uh, the Dakshay the you know, is there, and uh, he kills her, and then Havan is parts, and then Sakyamina has come. But where was Shiva? What was his avatar prayer to that? Even though he was an Ayurveda, there were 64 avatars of Shiva mentioned in Tamil literature, and today Madurai proves it, because for a simple fact, Madurai Meenakshi is not a uh, Imagination. Her father had fought in Mahabharata war. Malay Dojo fought a war. So this is a separate parallel uh, civilization was existing and it existed in Congress. And this civilization was closely linked to Ayla dynasty. They call it in the West Ayla dynasty. Queen Ayla you will find in uh, Middle East, in the Thar Desert. Uh, sorry, not uh, in uh, near uh, Saudi Arabia desert. The Ayla is none other than Iraq. Toward the east, what we now can say is that uh, the civilization of Mu or Lemuria. So these are some questions. And when the Western gods were present here, the at the nascent, at the nascent period of Himalayas being formed, that was the time Shiva's marriage took place, and dated is about 40,000 years, 40 like years old. And that was the period when uh, Agastya was directed by Shiva himself to go to South to Bhagavad At that point in time, Vindya did not allow him, then he made it to sit, and then he came down, it became level. But when you date it, this is how, you can ask me how it is dated. It is dated because of the fact that there is a nakshatra. Uh, of uh, uh, Agastya, Canopus star. These Canopus will be visible in the normal hemisphere once in 25,000 years old. The earliest we refer is that to Ramayana. And again, there is again another question which 25,000 years, then again, we'll go to a lot of different. By dating it, we date it. So, in a sense, when you are talking about quite vast stretches of time, Beyond a certain limit, it's very difficult to find David. But we find pointers. I'm trying to dig more. Essential reason for Chandravamsa is that Ayla has come towards south, I mean, towards the east of what is now India, east of uh, India, and towards the west, through her uh, uh, progeny from Thuruasu, they went towards the Middle East and they went, and they spread towards Spain, and also they went to Nazca, Nazca, and now the uh, Excellent information we one can find in Sundarganda, where Sugriva directed Vana Sena, how to find Sita. All these places are geographically described by him. Today they are intact. Valmiki doesn't lie. Valmiki is where today Cook's Island in New Zealand, then Rings of Fire in New Zealand, then North Carolina of Peru, everywhere it describes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, thank you, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
one more question from my side uh, see in christianity and islam there is a lot of things said against idolatry idol worship is actually talked uh, very very strongly against idol worship now mm. this idol worship then uh, would have come from many of the tribes or uh, people uh, from sanatana dharma is it Does, is there yes. any pointer like yes this? yes who is speaking this hari harinath sir ha huh? harinath no. yeah you are 100% the fight as i said so i made it in the initial remark even though the vedas are very specific about saying that only nirguna upasana formless worship is recommended now in narmana shraddha of shankaracharya you will find the same thing but how is it that we landed up with the idol food because hinduism understands the limitations of human mind and consciousness after all one has to realize only through two two sources with this physical brain one is through the mind another is through the heart head or heart now in the heart you do with the emotion you don't need even an either but as far as brain is concerned for success you need you still keep on questioning now when you want to concentrate you can't concentrate on shunya it is very difficult to concentrate the purpose of liberation or the act of liberation or liberation itself is a thoughtless state it is very loosely defined in patanjali it starts with this uh, sutra yoga yoga chitta vritti nirodhita which means the cessation of the modification of chitta is called that's all you will have to stop the vibration from the thought that arise out of your mind not mind out of chitta the activity of the brain is mind intellect is a discriminating power and higher than that is chitta so whenever a thought process arises it gives you lot of modification it disturbs now when you have thousands of thoughts running your mind our people said it is very difficult to concentrate on something zero so what they said is first step is let us have one shape so then i do that is called saguna or others so what is saguna it is when you are trying to do something when you are trying to emulate something you will emulate something which is perfect in your opinion so we attribute all the uh, positive qualities which we cannot even imagine and we give them and then we do saguna then we start worshiping then come the heart path so everything everybody has a different disposition sattva guna rajo guna tamo guna it's a mixture of everything nobody is born of pure sattva no prarajas no sattva no depending on mental nature so the type of relationship is established with the idol as a mother devi as a guru shiva i mean everybody is intense as far as i know as vishnu as an elderly uncle so something like this so the purpose is to make your chitta to concentrate cessation of your thought process when hundreds of instead of first thing is you can't concentrate on abstract the second is okay if you can't mind will keep on going krishna when arjuna asks him uh, krishna he tells uh, i mean arjuna tells krishna krishna is very easy for you to say control the mind i find it very difficult to do it then krishna says 100% what you are saying but there are only two solution one solution is one is dada chitta that is you have to write determination and practice so what is the way to practice only when it thousands of thought you reduce it to 100 100 to 50 then 10 3 2 1 so what they did was one idol for 10 idols 15 idols why so many idols because if you like something you like a mother form okay take this similarly so many gods have come then what are the other disciplines these puja and puraskara what they say what is this puja and puraskara because there are some disciplines to make your mind concentrate so that is how this saguna upasana has come but without saguna upasana going to nirguna upasana as mentioned in veda is difficult it is possible for people who are highly realized so like uh, bhagavad gita or sankracharya not a sri ramanan it's not possible we have to go through the process and like a child going through lkg standard 1 2 and 3 and reach doctorate once you reach the doctorate the lkg first standard may seem redundant without it you not it so saguna irasana is accepted in the sense that it helps you to realize the reality 
and it has not to be taken seriously as an Indian sir. Thank you, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, if uh, there is no other question, then uh, we can end the session today. Uh, yeah. Mantra. Yeah.